book seventh here. Now, as some of you probably know, uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, the famous pro wrestler and actor, uh, passed away a few days ago. He was 61 years old. He uh, died of cardiac arrest in his sleep. And I wanted to do a video about him and for him because uh, I grew up loving wrestling. I and the first event that I ever saw wasn't live. It was on well, it was live, but it was on uh, closed circuit at a uh, my local arena. It was not uh, a pay per view at home or at the actual location. But I saw the original WrestleMania. And, of course, he was uh, the villain. Uh, this was the first wrestling I'd ever seen in my life. And whereas everyone was Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan, Hulk Hogan back then, uh, I was immediately drawn towards Piper and the way he acted. And that's what got me hooked on to pro wrestling. And, of course, over the years, you know, I went back and watched all the classic matches like the dog collar match and, you know, seeing him... Uh, uh, bust a coconut over the head of uh, Jimmy Fly, uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka, but I wanted to do a video about him, and I know some of you are going to say, well, one, you know, you run a video game channel, you don't run a pro wrestling channel. Well, I'm making an exception in this case, and secondly, that, you know, I already had some comments about people getting broken up and emotional over the death of uh, Satoru Iwata. Well, I'm not getting broken up and emotional about this. Uh, because that's just not the kind of guy that I am. Uh, I didn't even shed a tear over my uh, my dad's funeral. Uh, but this is a little bit of a different story when compared to these people that were getting so uh, upset uh, over someone they'd never met. And you're gonna you're gonna see why that is in the course of this. But I have a story to tell uh, about. Roddy Piper, and this is something that I've, I've told some of you about, and it happened uh, two years ago now, well, a year and a half ago, 2014, and uh, I thought I would share it as just a kind of a personal tribute to the Rowdy one. So anyway, this was at the Mad Monster Party in 2014. Now, when I did the Mad Monster Party in 2013. Uh, I filmed a lot of it and I did several videos and showed, uh, posted those videos on my channel. You'll notice I didn't really do that for the 2014. And the reason being is because, as you guys know, I have to wear dark prescription glasses. I have a light sensitivity issue and I'm nearsighted. So these are actual prescription lens glasses. And not too long before the uh, uh, conference, the, the con was to take place, one of the lenses fell out. And uh, at that point, I hadn't been uh, on contacts in years, and I hadn't uh, had to buy new glasses uh, recently. So, uh, so the, the only backup pair that I had was a 10-year-old cracked pair of glasses that you guys have actually seen. They're the glasses that I... Uh, used for my Reverend Seventh videos, my old Reverend Seventh stuff, and that was it. Was either not be able to see anything or walk around wearing those dorky glasses, and uh, have to take migraine medication to make sure before the event to make sure that I didn't uh, suffer any ill effects from the uh, lights at the conference. So long story short, I've never posted any of this footage or pictures because of the fact that I looked like such a dork walking around in these these old, what looked like grandpa glasses. So, uh, long story short, we went to the convention and I'm I met a lot of different people there, uh, people from uh, various uh, horror films that I've been fans fans of and uh, TV shows and. You know, we picked up a lot of uh, action figures for our swag and whatnot. And, uh, but the person that I was really there to meet was Rowdy Roddy Piper. Now, Hulk Hogan was there too, but he wasn't there until the next day for this big Q&A event that he was doing with Roddy. I didn't care anything about that. I only wanted to meet Piper. Piper was my big draw of going there. I'd always wanted to meet him. Uh, my mom had always been a big fan of his. And uh, 
she had you know she used to uh, always watch all of his movies regardless of whether they were theatrical or you know little El Cheapo directed video movies even Hell Comes to Frogtown and all that stuff and so uh, I uh, she was doing she wasn't doing very well at that time she was uh, quite ill and so I had it in my mind that me, my wife, and my kid were going to go to this con and get him to record a message for her or sign a picture for her, something to make her feel better at that time, that kind of thing. So anyway, uh, stood in line to meet him and uh, finally got up to his table, and there he was. And uh, I was struck by the fact that I... You know, this guy used to stand more or less toe-to-toe with Hogan, but over the years, he was now, like, my height. And uh, I was kind of taken, you know, I was kind of surprised by that, but at the same time, uh, he seemed so alive. You know, it was just so uh, very energetic, very friendly. And I told him that, uh, I told him about, you know, my mom and how she wasn't doing good and whatnot, and uh, that... She had always been a big fan of his, and that I had too. That you know, I always route, you know, I always rooted for him when I was a kid. I never rooted for the good guys, and when he became a good guy, I still rooted for him. And I, I mentioned to him, I said, "This," I said, "I'll tell you how much of a fan my mom was of you." I said, "She wanted you to know uh, when I told her that I was going to be when I called her and told her that I was going to be coming out to meet you. She wanted." you to know that you were her favorite guest star on Walker, Texas Ranger. And he had been a guest star on one episode of Walker, Texas Ranger years and years ago. And his face lit up with the biggest smile I've ever seen. And he and he said, wow, I can't believe anybody even remembers I was on that show. And I said, well, it's my mom's favorite favorite episode she can read she could recite it to you line by line and he was like do you he's like do you have her cell phone number I, i'll call her and talk to her right now and i was like no i don't have my cell phone on me but i do have my camcorder if you would want to record uh a message for her and so he did and that footage that piece of footage i'm not i'm not going to share today because that was something that he that he made for her and so that was uh, for her eyes only, I'm not going to share that, but uh, at any rate, uh, I got uh, an autographed picture for her, and uh, there was a guy that had actually stepped in front of me and broke line to uh, get his autographed picture with Piper, and Piper saw that happen, and uh, but he didn't, he didn't chew the guy out or anything, he just shook his hand, hey, thanks for coming, here's your photo. And then he and when I stepped up, he's like, "Man, I'm sorry about that. There's just assholes in the world." And he said, uh, "Here, I hope this makes up for it." And he hands me uh, a commemorative Roddy Piper cup. And if you look on my and when I've shown pictures of my uh, video game shelves where I have stuff sitting on top of the shelves, that cup is sitting there in a little place of honor that I put up there. But uh, we went. Uh, he filmed his little message for my mom. And then he, uh, uh, I, I said, I'd like to get a picture with you. And so uh, we were standing there, and uh, of course all I had with me was my camcorder, which had like a, an also a built-in picture taker function. And so uh, I was showing his handler that was with him how to take photos with the camera, but it was also filming. And so I'm standing there with him, and you can't really hear this because it's so loud in there, but uh, he puts his arm around me. And I lean over to him, and I was like, you know, I only bought a ticket for today. And I said, I know Hogan's going to be here tomorrow, but I don't give a shit about Hogan. I came to see you. And he turns, and he looks at me, and again, he flashes that huge grin. And he said, I love you, man. And, you know, I know fa- <laughs> I know that uh, celebrities will do that for fans and whatnot, but... It didn't seem like something that he was just telling a fan to make him feel good. It, it, there was a sincerity to it there. Like, he really cared about people that would pay money to see him and would go out of their way to come to an event just to see him. He appreciated that uh, that love 
that you had for for someone like him, and he'd give it back to you. And the you know I will never forget that huge smile on his face. To this to the day I die, I'll never forget how big <laughs> the grin on his face was. And so you know we got our picture and everything, and I thanked him again and. And uh, so, you know, I went and met up with uh, with my wife and my son, and we went out, you know, to do the rest of our business for this uh, convention. And one of the things that we had done was we had, uh, we had gotten a uh, photo op with William Shatner. William Shatner was the big star of the convention, him and Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I went to see Piper, but I figured while I was there... Uh, since my wife was a big Star Trek fan and Eighth was a fan of the the new show, the new movies, that we'd go ahead and get our picture taken with William Shatner. So that was like, you know, I got to I got to talk to Roddy for like ten minutes while this, you know, there's this line forming behind us. We go to Shatner, and it was just you walk in, they tell you where to stand. He's sitting there on a stool with a grin on his face. And you don't get to talk to him. You don't get to shake his hand or nothing. He just grins, take the picture, and you walk out the other door. So we got that done. Didn't do Elvira. And uh, we came out that door, uh, the side door, which led into this utility hallway that the hotel staff would use to move trays and stuff in and around the place. And there stands Piper. And he recognizes me, and he's like, oh, you're still here. And I was like, yeah, yeah, still here, still making the rounds. I said, what are you doing, taking a break? Yeah, I got to get something to drink and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I introduced him to my wife and my son, and, you know, he gave my son, who, you know, eighth was a year and a half younger then, you know, he rustles his hair and, you know, typical, hey there, kid kind of thing. And uh, he was, and he stood in that hallway, and he talked to us, uh, for another 15 minutes or so before he went on his way to get a drink. And I turned uh, I turned to my wife and I was like, man, that's so cool. I mean, we just keep running into him today. And so we left there and we went and did some other stuff. Like I got my picture taken with Stretch, the radio DJ chick from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. We got our picture taken with Heather Langenkamp, who played Nancy in the original Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, that kind of stuff. And this whole time, we kept coming back and seeing if our photo was ready, and it wasn't. And we kept running into Piper. And every time we saw him, he'd stop and talk to us for 10, 15 minutes at a time. And hours and hours and hours later, you know, my feet were killing me. Everyone was tired. We'd been walking in there all day long. And uh, we went back to that uh, utility corridor, figuring that would be a good place to wait for our picture to be ready, uh, instead of having to stand around in the line or sit on the floor, because we had noticed when we were back there that they had, they had a whole bunch of chairs lined up there. So we went back to that utility corridor, and right behind us, uh, off the hallway, was two doors. The door that led to where Shatner was doing his photo op, where they were printing up all the pictures, and a door that led to... Uh, a reptile encounter room where they had a small alligator and some lizards and that kind of thing. So we uh, pulled up some chairs and we sat down and we figured we were just going to sit there and wait for our photo to be ready. Well, here comes Piper again, walking down the same utility corridor. And he's like, you're still here. And I, and I explained to him that, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're waiting on a photo op. And he was like, well, photo op? And my kid said to him, yeah, we got our picture taken with William Shatner and they're taking forever to make our picture and we can't go home until they've printed the picture up. And he looked at me and he looked down at 8th and he kind of he kind of threw his shoulders back a little bit like, I'm not going to stand for this shit. And he, he said, where are they printing them? And I said, they're printing them at that door. And I pointed at the door to the conference room. Uh, where Shatner had gotten his pictures taken. But he must have not seen which door I was pointing at, and he thought I was pointing to the one closest to behind us. So he bursts through that door, and he's like, Hey! Kid needs his photo! And he, and he throws his thumb behind his shoulder, only to realize that he had just stepped into the reptile room. 
and there sitting on the floor staring at him was an alligator. He comes leaping out of the hallway. And he's like, no, 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 no. I don't do reptiles. Don't do reptiles. And, and the, the handlers of the reptiles, they came out and they're like, oh, Mr. Piper, it's okay. It's okay. They can't hurt you. And they coaxed him back into the, uh, the reptile room. And he stood in there and talked to him. Now, keep in mind, according to him, he had a, a death and you know a, a severe fear of reptiles but they had coaxed him back in and he was talking to him and asking him questions about him and whatnot so he finally comes back out and i ask him well are you done you uh you going home now and he's like oh no i'm i'm uh, going to, uh, back to my prison because he had to come back the next day for hogan and uh he took the time as long as he had been standing all day long and here we are sitting in chairs he takes the time to sit and play with my kid for another couple of minutes, uh, having failed in getting eighth his William Shatner photo, I guess he owed him. He felt like he owed him something since he failed in his mission to get eighth's photo back. So he sits and plays with eighth for a couple of minutes, and uh, then he heads off into uh, down the hallway. And I thanked him for taking the time, and uh, that was my experience with meeting Mr. Piper. And the reason that I wanted to share this with you guys uh, was not so much in the hopes that, you know, his family might want to see uh, see their dad from like a fan's perspective, because I'm sure they've seen that hundreds of times. But I wanted you guys to see that there was more to him than just the, uh, the pro wrestling bad boy, you know, the guy, the... Uh, the guy with the mouth, the guy that could run the mic. You know, there was a natural uh, father-like aspect to him. He was a natural dad, I guess you could say. And I wanted you to see how he how he interacted with my kid in the few minutes that he stood there. And just to see him from a different perspective and uh, just kind of celebrate uh, the guy that he was. So this this was the best tribute I could think of. Uh, for the man, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. So, uh, there's not a whole lot of footage, but enjoy what's there. This is seventh. There he is, folks. Rowdy, Roddy Piper, right there. At the line. Rowdy, Roddy We, we saw you just the other night. It was a, uh, it was a uh, on that new W uh, WWE Network thing. Is that right? I don't know what they're playing on there. Yeah. I get a chance to see it. <laughs> Check this out. We're sitting in the back because our William Shatner picture five hours later still isn't developed. Piper comes walking past again, and we say, "Hey, we're still sitting here, still waiting." And he's like, "What are you still doing here?" And I said, we're still waiting on our Shatner pick. And he walked over to 8th and said, you're still waiting on your picture? He said, yeah. He walked in there, and he comes up to him, and he's like, hey, kid needs his picture. It's like he has no wild instincts anymore. Yeah. See there? I ain't making it up. <laughs> he's standing right there. He went in there to find out why we haven't gotten our picture of Shatner yet. I never said he did that. No, that was a clever one. Sid has a picture of we have been sitting back here in the back area all this time and no one has said shit to us about it. <laughs> Tell you what, the security at the Hilton is just awesome. It's just awesome. Were well, you finally going to get out of here? You going to get to go home? Well, I'm, I still got prison time to do. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. You know, like, get that William Shatner guy, you know. Come, yeah, back tell him you're going to come and see Spock for me. He gets <laughs> his pictures back faster with them 20 years. There you go. What do you got? You ate yet? Uh, yeah. yeah, we went yeah, to Applebee's. What did you have to eat? Um, we had um, Applebee's. Yeah. <laughs> so are you a mama's boy or daddy's boy? That's a tough question. Isn't it? My son, he's a mama's boy. You dad boy, until you need something, right, Cook? <laughs> well, it was awesome meeting you, sir. You have a good one.